Hey guys, this is a look at a Hoshizaki commercial ice maker. Uh, these are used in commercial kitchens. Uh, if you've ever had a drink at Professor Mug's pub at BCIT, you might have uh, had ice made by this machine. Uh, it's basically just a refrigeration system, uh, and it cools these uh, plates in here that have water flowing on them. Uh, this produces ice, which then falls down into a large bin. Uh, that was below this. The bin would have been about the bit bigger than the size of a full-size refrigerator. According to the ratings panel, this runs on uh, 208 or 230 volts at 6.5 amps, so not a huge amount of power, and it uses uh, R502. Although, I th according to a note elsewhere in the system, that's been changed to a different refrigerant. And according to the manual, this produces 290 kilograms of ice per day, or a little bit less depending on the ambient temperature. I've also I've linked the uh, user manual and service manual in the video description if anyone wants to uh, look at those. The actual ice maker portion consists of these, uh, I believe they're stainless steel um, ribbed pieces. These have the refrigeration coils running in between them, though they're not really, I'm not sure if they're supposed to be anchored, but they're not uh, that well. Like they, they move around quite a bit, so thermal coupling is not, uh, not really that good. Below that there's a screen, and under that a tank of water. There's a water pump here that pumps that water from the bottom all the way up over to the top and it distributes it quite nicely over these little sort of drain things that then drips it down. Uh, there's also a float control on the water tank and it, according to this that is the cube size control so what I think is happening is as the water freezes it drains the tank slightly and when that hits the float switch the control electronics then uh, switch it into sort of a defrost mode that heats the coils melts the ice off and then it falls down and the uh, cycle then repeats. As is typical with these machines, the tubes are, uh, can get quite dirty, although this appears to be on the outside. Elsewhere, uh, the machine actually appears to be have been kept quite clean. Like, you don't really see much dirt in here around here. There's some little deposits that I think are just sort of scale built up from the, uh, from the water. So overall, not too bad. Under this cover, we have a few uh, instructions for uh, startup and checking the control box. This is pretty nice stainless steel. Over here we just have, uh, this is a the suction for the, the intake for the pump, and this is, I believe, is a temperature sensor used to detect when the ice has built up high enough. Obviously when this temperature sensor right there gets cold, it says there's, there's enough ice and it stops ma uh, making any more ice. And up there is where the ice comes down onto this little removable tray, if I can get that out. And then... I think you can't really see very well in there, but there's you can see, there's water and some uh, bunch of dirt that I think is left over from when I had uh, filled it. The refrigeration system in this is reasonably typical, although it doesn't use the normal uh, R12 or R22 or any of the newer refrigerants. It uses uh, R502, although the label here indicates it's been changed out for R408 uh, uh, something. I'm not sure uh, what the last letter is. Uh, one thing that's conspicuously absent from this is the large condenser coil. That's because they've used a uh, water-cooled condenser here. This just has uh, mains water flowing through it. There's two connections, an input and a discharge. The one problem with this is it's very wasteful of water. According to the manual, this thing takes uh, 4,000 liters of uh, fresh mains water a day to cool the condenser uh, if it's running at uh, uh, maximum rate producing ice. That's quite a huge waste of water because usually the wastewater that comes out, this, out of this that is warm is just dumped straight down the drain. That's one thing I don't like about this, uh, about this design. The water fed through the condenser is not just dumped through at a constant rate or at full rate that would be supported by the uh, water mains connection. There's this flow control valve that uh, controls the flow of water through the condenser to maintain a uh, constant pressure on the discharge of the compressor. That's what this uh, tap uh, tap here is for. So as the pressure as the pressure on the discharge goes up, a piston pushes against this spring and causes the valve to open a small amount and to let just the required amount of water through uh, to cool it. And no, uh, no more. So at least they're using the water as efficiently as they can. These flow regulation valves also seem to be a significant source of failure because this one has obviously been replaced because they have. Uh, abandon an old one here uh, in place. You can see the, the other tube for that goes over to here and when they've installed the replacement they put this vampire tap type fitting on 
which has leaked and I think has ultimately caused the failure of the system probably due to a low refrigerant. Other than that, the refrigeration system is pretty typical. The discharge from the compressor goes through the coil, is condensed to liquid. Liquid goes through a filter dryer. The tube then goes, the liquid line then goes up following the cold suction line back to the compressor for some reason and comes out over here through a uh, TXV into the bottom and then out into the coil where it's evaporated uh, removing heat to freeze the ice and then back uh, somewhere here uh, through the uh, back to the compressor. Once the ice is frozen on these coils uh, it needs to, the coils need to be heated up to dislodge the ice and cause it to fall down to the bin. Uh, to do that, uh, it doesn't have a full reverse cycle valve like a heat pump does, but it does have a solenoid valve that bypasses hot gas straight from the compressor discharge right into the input of the evaporator, so that it doesn't put as anywhere near as much heat as a full reverse cycle system would uh, into the evaporator, but it, but it puts enough to melt the ice off of the coils. And apparently the cycle time is about 15 minutes uh, to make ice and then a few more minutes to uh, get the dislodge the ice uh, down into the bin. The evaporator on this is marked Edwards Engineering Corp. Um, has a date of 97. I'm told this machine was installed around um, 24 years ago, so the early 90s, so I'm, either this has been replaced or that uh, information is incorrect. Mains water to make ice is fed into the system by a connection on the back going over to a small solenoid valve on this side which then goes in to the top and is injected onto the top of the coils. There's also a valve here. I think this is something to do with cleaning so you can circulate the water in a different path or have the fresh water go through the system in a different path, I'm guessing, so you can uh, wipe or wash uh, cleaner off the coils after you've uh, cleaned them. The system's controlled from this control box on the top. Uh, not a huge amount in here. A couple of run and start capacitor for the compressor, some starting relays. Uh, control transformer and a uh, circuit board that has various relays and a uh, microcontroller of some sort labeled, this one's labeled Hoshizaki. wonder if that's a Maskrom. They probably don't make their own chips. That's probably a Maskrom or uh, one-time programmable part. A few little switches. I wonder what those control. And there's a, a bunch of various thermistors very, um, in different places around the system, I think, to measure the coil temperature and maybe the water bath temperature and other parameters of the refrigeration system. And there's also a little, there's probably an overpressure switch to shut the system down should the, uh, say, the water uh, cooling fail and the pressure would go too high. Of course, on this thing, due to cost, all of the visible surfaces on the outside are nice stainless steel, but the internal things like this base plate, which could really have done with stainless steel, of course, are not. You can also tell this was certainly built before the price of copper skyrocketed because they're using a piece of copper here as conduit for uh, to get wiring down to the pump. I guess it must have been easy to use their copper bending machines to just to make these in-house rather than having to bend up a metal conduit or plastic. Let's give this thing a run. Uh, I believe the refrigerant may have been recovered because uh, there was a refrigeration tech there when this was being removed, but let's see what this does. A bit of hum from the control box. Let's turn the water on. That's the filling source. That's the cooling. And let's go to ice. So apparently it's going to, what it's going to do first is fill all uh, the water and according to the manual, oh, is it going across here, is it? No, not really. According to the manual, it's going to fill it just based on a timer rather than a, uh, a even though it has a float switch, it just uses a timer. I think that's, they're doing that so that uh, some water gets flushed through the tank and out the uh, drain on this side. So that, because uh, as the ice freezes, the water, the, the ice is very pure and the impurities get left in the water. And if you didn't do, cycle it through, the impurities would then build up and cause problems in the, uh, with the hard water build up in the uh, water tank. Then after it, after it fills, apparently it's going to run a, for a defrost cycle for a minute or two with that bypass valve open, then it's going to go into actual cooling mode. There goes defrost. You hear some of the hissing as the gas is flowing through. The 
could very well just be nitrogen or something they left in the system, but we'll, we'll see. After it goes defrost, it should then turn the water pump on and should see if there's water flow. Pump is now on. That was an interesting view of the water flow through. Want to see all these little um, broken off bits from that tray down at the very bottom have migrated up to here from the pump. Now, this is a little bit angled, so we've got a bit more water coming out here than this side. It's a really very even uh, distribution of water, definitely. The pump is actually really quiet, it's going to be a nice uh, piece of this, some more water flowing, flowing out under there. I'm guessing as the ice fell down, it tends to break that, uh, that grill. It seems to be making a little bit of cooling, although I'm not sure if that's just the cold water. Of course, the discharge is getting a little bit warm. I'll give it five or ten minutes and then we'll see uh, see how it's running. Yeah, right now the bypass valve is barely flowing anything. Apparently this machine produces crescent shaped ice cubes rather than the square ones. That's probably why they're using a low thermal conductivity material here, so it just the ice will just build up where the tube contacts the um, plate of stainless steel rather than uh, all over the whole thing, so it'll form the, the crescent shapes. running for over 15 minutes now and this is still not really that warm like I can still hold my hands on that and this is uh, essentially cold so I have to conclude that they did recover the refrigerant or uh, just all almost all of the refrigerant has leaked out you can definitely hear hissing around this uh, valve as well I was looking into the operation of this valve and apparently according to this label down here what that does is during cleaning it allows the water from the pump to come up through the valve and into the fresh water intake area. And that seems to be discharged not on the outside of the coils, but through these little tubes between the, the, the um, uh, plates and the coils themselves. So I'm guessing that uh, allows you to sanitize or clean the inside of the coils. It seems like all the new water is dumped in between the coils as well. So that would uh, clean them during the... Uh, filling or perhaps would also allow ice to form between the coils and the plate to help uh, thermal conductivity, although ice is certainly not the best, uh, the best thermal conductor. And let's just see what wash does. So it seems to just leave the pump running. I believe it may be running the uh, fresh water supply as well, although I can't tell. Yeah, I was thinking of just leaving the, leaving the pump run running. That was a pretty cool piece of commercial tech that you don't get to see every day. Anyways, hope you found that video interesting. Thanks for watching.